Hello, my name is Don Kaufman and welcome to Simpler Options. Tonight, really the theme here for uh, this July 28th, 2015, what strength in the S&Ps today that, that many of you see over here. So the S&Ps are up some 25 points. There are some real pockets of weakness. So really the theme tonight uh, in strength, I actually see uh, quite a degree of weakness. Let me point out some of the aspects where I do see uh, quite a bit of weakness. First and foremost, we do have an FOMC announcement on the horizon. It is tomorrow. So why in the midst of a 25 point up move in the S&Ps, do I have to rain on your parade? Hey, clearly the S&Ps have had, you know, a solid week of downness followed by a rip roared rally to the upside. And over the years, experience kind of tells me like, listen, in the midst of down moves, sometimes the, the most wild move can in fact be an up move. And that's exactly what we've seen over here. But the area of weakness, okay, number one, uh, the S&Ps were up about one and a quarter percent today. The NASDAQ and the NASDAQ, which has been the really the rip roaring of all your major index products. It's, you know, all you hear is uh, the NASDAQ hitting new, you know, highs and then it hit new all time highs over here. The NASDAQ, ladies and gentlemen, even in a rip roaring rally day, it's weak. All right, it only moved up eight tenths of a percent today. And I'd be remiss not to mention again, the NASDAQ is, uh, it didn't feel the brunt if you will, of some of the down move that the S&Ps were involved in. But it's also not really participating nearly as much in the upside potential. In fact, um, the candle and the upside move that we saw today uh, didn't even reverse the damage that was done, okay, ultimately yesterday, which was uh, albeit minimal, but again, eight tenths of a percent to the upside. The other major product that I've been uh, watching and continue to watch happens to be the, uh, the Russell. The Russell, which has often been one of the stronger of the products in up days and on down days is often the weakest of the product. The Russell also only eight tenths of a percent move to the upside. Uh, lastly, I'm looking looking for weakness in the midst of strength over here. Uh, Apple, which is your largest market cap stock only produces, again, a half a percent to the upside. That's directly one of the reasons that you didn't see the NASDAQ participating. But again, I, I wouldn't normally point out any weakness when the S&Ps are up, you know, almost 25 plus points over there. But I have to point it out when I both the, the NASDAQ and the Russell underperform along with the largest market cap stock out there. And there's other signs where stocks like, for instance, Microsoft, didn't only not participate, it was uh, albeit down, it was relatively flat on the day. And there's these signs everywhere. And and really, you know, the the other one that kind of stands out to me is I, uh, I kind of come from the financial industry and I tend to look at financials over here. The financials, uh, the XLF specifically, only up, uh, you know, 0.4% percent inside of today's trade. So ultimately, what I'm trying to point out is some of the largest market cap stocks don't participate in the upside today. The NASDAQ okay, underperforms the S&P. The Russell underperforms the S&P. The financials as a sector, well, they're massive. If you've never really looked at the financials over here, um, I guess uh, one of the greatest ways to, to view the financials, quite literally view the financials, the financials themselves in terms of market capitalization uh, are second to IT, which, you know, the only reason IT is any bigger is because of Apple. And when you start to look a little bit, if you will, of like a heat map, and I'm not into ooh, what's up and what's down on the day, just what sectors are strong and what sectors are weak. When you start looking at this, you kind of wonder like, what the heck drove the S&Ps, okay, up 25 points today. And you're like, oh, there it is, ExxonMobil. It was actually the rebound in uh, in some of the energy stocks that actually drove and fueled a huge, huge amount, as well as, okay, yeah, I could point out like Amgen over here, but ExxonMobil in terms of market cap, I mean, that thing is up four plus percent once in a while, taking this, this you know, 50,000 foot view and looking over it like a heat map can be quite useful. Nevertheless, FOMC announcement uh, tomorrow, listen, we're a coin flip away from having some really horrific days over here. You need to see Apple start to recover. Apple breaking under 120, 
it's going to pull the market along with it. It's already doing it right now. Apple under 124 was uh, was quite the signal, and Apple is really we're sitting at this big time inflection point in the markets, and uh, lots of traders are looking though towards the largest market cap to give us some strength, and they did not get it today. Watch out here in the coming days. Again, if Apple breaks under the 120 level, it uh, may be uh, a little bit more of an ugly, volatile market the rest of the summer. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining me. I'm Don Kaufman here at SimplerOptions.com.